The interview is how to succeed. Um, so this is a very interesting aspect. I find, and I have personal experience with, with my students helping them with this. I've gone through this program several times with several different students. I can say for a fact, because of this process of interviews that I'm going to talk about today, but the interview process is, is great to know about. Um, and I've had students that have gone from Brazil to, to different countries. Uh, at least four of my students have gotten to get jobs based on what I've helped them with. In Canada, four students in Canada. I have um, another one that went to Ireland, another one that went to, to, to uh, Switzerland, another one is in Germany. This is effective, this works, this really helps you. So when you go over this process, I'm also gonna do some videos on my channel about that. So when you go over this process, um, use it, because these are things that are very, very effective. Um, so if you don't, let's say you, you go through several interviews, like it says here, keep practicing. There's a lot of people out there trying to get these jobs. You will be successful, you just have to keep going. These, these, Following these tips, advice, and tricks will help you. Um, we're going to talk about the first interview. That's the first thing we're going to go to. So let's go to look smooth. Okay, going to look smooth. Now this is, um, most of what I talk about is actually physically going to the interview site. But generally speaking, what's going to happen is, is most of you here, if you do an interview with somebody that's speaking English, it's going to be on Zoom. It's going to be on some some kind of platform like that. So you just have to look good from here up, right? <laughs> so make sure that you are, are you're, you're, if you're a girl, you do your makeup right. If you're a guy, just make sure you're clean and just look good. If sometimes you have to wear a tie, you should wear a tie. Not necessarily all the time, but that's, that's basically you got to look the part. you got to look professional. I'll give you a story of why it's important to look good. I owned a gym in the United States for about 10 years. And I had people come and work for me. And I put an ad out and people would come. And I had a guy come with a, a t-shirt that's not a normal t-shirt. I don't know what you call those. Just <laughs> BBD. Okay. And shorts and flip-flops. Chunklas. Right? And, and so he comes in and I said, can I help you? And he goes, yeah, I'm here for the job. And I'm like, what? I go, why, why are you wearing what you're wearing? He goes, it's just a gym. And I said, you can walk right back out that door. It's, it's the attitude. Your attitude has to show that not only do you want the job, but you respect who you're gonna be working for. That's, that's so important. It's not about uh, it's just this job. Even if you're, even if it's going for garbage collecting, <laughs> you've got to, got to look good. You got to look like, hey, I'm respectable. I respect you for giving me this job. And so that's very important to remember that as you as you go to the interview. So let's get into the, um, let's get into the interview part itself. Oh, show up on time, not Ecuadorian time. It, especially if it's Zoom, there's no need to be late. If they have, especially if they're from the United States, if they say, we're gonna do, we're gonna, at four o'clock, we're gonna have a Zoom meeting, and you're five minutes late, that don't look good at all. Um, <clears throat> one other thing in the background, if you're on a meeting, if you're doing a meeting with someone, make sure your phone's off. Turn your phone off. Don't be looking at your watch. This, this gives them the impression that you would rather be somewhere else. If you just glance at your watch, they're gonna go, oh, this guy don't wanna be here. He don't do it. Now, you may be thinking totally opposite. You may be thinking, oh, I forgot I gotta turn off the microwave, whatever, I don't know. It doesn't matter. That time, that time frame that you have for that interview is gonna be how long? 30 minutes, if it's really good, maybe 45 minutes? That time should be a lot, a slotted out. That that's the only important thing in your life right now, that job interview, right? So set out that time aside. Let's go to number one, tell me about yourself. 
Uh, we're going to go to part two. Tell me about yourself, part two. More than likely, all right, I get somebody can read. Uh, I like this girl here with the black shirt, image of on her shirt. Um, first thing to remember to be friendly with the interviewer as if you are already working with them as part of your team. That seems like an easy um, interview question. It's open ended. I can talk about whatever I want from my birth uh, forward, right? Wrong? What the hiring manager really wants is a quick two to three. Middle a snapshot uh, of who you are and why you are the best candidate for this position. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, this is not, if somebody says, tell me about yourself, and you say, I'm from Ecuador, I live in Ibarra, I used to live in Quito, and my family is from Guayaquil. You don't want to go into that. That's not what they're looking for. They're not, they don't want to hear any of that. They can see where you're from on your CV. So I can talk about whatever I want from my birth forward, right? Wrong, wrong, you don't do that. What I suggest is writing down the answers to all these questions that this is probably going to be on every single interview you go to. Tell me about yourself. So you have to know how to answer that. Let's go to the next slide, part three. So uh, let's see, we're going to get a volunteer from this side. This young man with the curly hair and the, there we go, yeah. Tell the yeah. that you don't prepare yourself to be the very best candidate for that position. Just an example or two to back it up. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Good job. Okay. So this again is talking about what you've done, what you've accomplished, how you've gotten to where you are right now. That's what you want to talk about. So spend some time because this will be on, on the on the questions that they ask. It's usually the first thing. So how you answer that is going to help them to go from the point, from the very beginning to the second question. So keep this in mind. Tell them how you've accomplished that. Maybe you haven't even worked yet. Maybe you're, you're, you're just finishing university. You have a degree and you've never experienced that, that what it's like to work in that field that you've been here for the last four years. So tell them what you've done in university, why you think you're the best candidate for that particular job, even though you've never worked in that field. That's how you got to tell them. Tell them in a story why you're the best candidate for that, why you can fit the job. And the other thing that I didn't talk about yet, but I'm going to talk about, is to make sure you do research on that particular company. You have to find out who they are. Look up articles on, on Google. Google them even Facebook, even Instagram, maybe they have some things there that you want to see about how they've, what they've accomplished as a company. Are they a reliable company? Do you want to make sure you work for a reliable company? Make sure that, that you know, because they're going to ask you questions about, do you know about us? We're going to get into that in a minute. So let's go to the second question uh, that they will usually ask is, what is your greatest weakness? Now this is, everybody's scared of this question. This question, is something that a lot of people have trouble with. And so this is, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because you can do this really well and it's a great way to answer. So we're gonna get, uh, I'm gonna read this one, okay? They're testing your emotional intelligence and to see whether or not you're self-aware. Answers like, oh, I'm a perfectionist uh, or I just work too hard. They don't sound authentic and honest. At a moment when you're trying to impress potential employers, this can be a stressful question to try to answer. Never try to dodge the question. If it comes up, don't panic. What's important to remember is what interviewers are looking for or when, they, when they're asking this question. The question is an opportunity to showcase how you tackle challenges and show different sides of your personality. So the reason I say, not to say I'm a perfectionist, or I work hard because you automatically should be that. You don't need to tell them that. 
That should be part of who you are. And, and you can explain who you are or talk about who you are by telling them what you do and how you do it, that you're a perfectionist or that you're a hard worker. Uh, those, are, those are the examples. Um, let's go to part two. Uh, let's get a, let, we can get a volunteer for this part. Uh, let's see, the young lady in the hoodie. Do not mention weakness that a name requirements for the role. In anticipation of the question of these questions, research the company's culture and value, and thoroughly read the description of the role you would be filled. If they say something in the job description like "you must be detailed, oriented," obviously you don't wait to pick apart the fact that you're not detail oriented. Mentioning a weakness that are not main requirement. Very good, thank you very much. So when it talks about not having, uh, not talking about a weakness uh, that is the main requirement, uh, let's say that you're, you, you're late a lot. You personally know that. You have a hard time getting up out of bed. You have a, don't ever mention that. So, oh yeah, I'm late, every, I'm late a lot. Don't ever mention that, never ever. Like it talks about here, if you're not detail oriented, don't talk about the fact that you're, oh, I have trouble with details. You never want to talk about that. You have to look like your ideal. You have to be, talk about your good qualities. But we're talking about what is your weakness. And so the idea is we're going to do, we're going to go to number three. What is your greatest weakness, part three? So let's say, for example, that you're, you're, you used to work or you're, you have a job where you did a lot where you had files. You had files and they give you these files and, and so you get overwhelmed. Every time a, a team leader or your boss, supervisor, would say, okay, I need this project done and you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do it. I gotta have this done too and this has gotta be done and we, okay, I'll do it. So you accumulate these and you never finished them on time. So you realized that you now have to say no to every, not to every project. You can't take every project. So you tell them that. You say, what I did in the past uh, was I used to take on too many projects and now I've learned to regulate what I do. I don't take on too many. I, I make sure that I take only what I can handle. And so that was my weakness in the past and this is what I've done to fix it. So now what they think about you is, okay, if this guy has a, has a problem with something in the future, he can fix it. He's, he's self-aware. He can do what it takes to fix that problem. So he is going to be a great employee for me because you talked about a problem that you had in the past, how you fixed it, and now you're moving forward. So that's ideally how you talk about weaknesses. Never talk about weaknesses as if you have them now. It always has to be something in the past, something that you've accomplished, overcome, and now you're good. So that is going to resonate well with the employer. So what's really cool too is if you guys are still taking English classes when you apply for a job, you can tell them that. Say, I'm still, I'm still in the process of learning English. That's something that I'm working on presently. And they're not gonna look down on you about that because in reality, English is a very fluid language. It's constantly changing. It's not like Korean that, or, or Japanese or Chinese that have characters that have been the same for thousands of years. English is constantly changing. They're changing words all the time. They're putting them together. And, and, and in fact, uh, you guys, I don't know if you know Spanglish. It's where they put Spanish and English together, and so they're forming new words. And so there's so many Spanish-speaking people in the United States that that's part of what happens. So constantly learning English, that's okay. That's okay to let them know that you're trying to improve. Any kind of a course that you tell that that you have is something you can tell them. I am doing this. This is an extracurricular thing I'm doing. This is a class I'm taking. This is something that I'm trying to improve in. Let them know about that. It should be on your resume.